Hi everybody, Mike King from Profiling Evil. I wanted to take a moment and explain a few things that happened in court yesterday in the case of the state of Colorado versus Barry Morphew. Thanks to all of you who have sent a note asking for a little clarification. If you get a chance, go back and watch our earlier video where we played the audio from the courtroom. I was really lucky to have Scott Reich of Crime Talk and Linda from It's a Crime join me for the hearing. And as you watch, you're going to see Barry Morphew appear for the hearing. And as he stands before the judge, he has his rights read to him. This is a formality. He states he understands him, which is really important. And you'll see that the court orders him back on May 27th, giving the defense roughly three weeks to start to prepare for the formal reading of charges. There were two really interesting things, maybe three, that happened in the court yesterday. I, I was hoping that the court would publicly release the arrest aff affidavit. They didn't. And frankly, there's a reason for that. I was also waiting to see if the court would make a ruling on all of the media requests that have come in to allow for expanded media coverage during the trials. In that, they did. But let's quickly examine what those two court orders entail, and I might throw in a, a little something extra uh, in the end here. First, Judge Patrick Murphy ruled on numerous requests that the court had received from the media to allow public broadcasting of the trial. Now, before the ruling, the judge heard from both the prosecution and the defense. He, he leaned on the standard of authorizing expanded media coverage. It's something that's found in Chapter 38 of the Colorado Court Rules. And it basically provides the standard for which the court has to, to understand and examine and make a decision on whether they're going to authorize media coverage. The court needed to consider three factors. First, whether there's a reasonable likelihood that this media coverage would interfere with the rights of Barry Morphew to a fair trial. The, the second thing was whether there is a reasonable likelihood that the media coverage could unduly detract from the solemnity, the decorum, or the dignity of the court. And then number three, whether expanded coverage could create adverse effects, which would be greater than those caused by traditional media coverage. Bottom line is, would a camera in the courtroom create more distraction, more adverse effects for Barry Morphew than simply having reporters in the courtroom who walk outside and broadcast from the steps of the courthouse? Well, after careful consideration, uh, the judge concluded that with the disappearance of Suzanne Morphew and the recent arrest of Barry Morphew, this is no secret in the public. It's already garnered significant media attention throughout Chafee County, Colorado, and across the country. In fact, I, I'm going to add, it's a global issue. Everyone around the world knows about the case of Suzanne Morphew. The court also stated that the defendant being filmed will not, in the court's opinion, increase uh, any attention to the case. It's already got the attention. So in the end, the court concludes that expanding the media coverage is not going to detract from the decorum or dignity of the court. And so the judge indicates that he's going to permit it. Now, this is great news for all of us who are going to be watching the proceedings from the sidelines. The court went on to say that it's going to give priority seating to the Morphew family and members of the defense and prosecution team. Now, giving priority seating to the Morphew family also means that the Mormon family is going to have priority seating. But it warns us that there's only going to be a few seats available for the public in the courtroom. The judge made a point of stressing that Suzanne's daughters, if they're present, are never to be filmed. Now, this is really a good move. I want to point out that the prosecution took real care in making sure that Barry Morphew could see his daughters. And they indicated that his daughters want to be able to see him. This is all a good thing. Some of you have been concerned with the protection order that was issued. 
again, that's a standard thing in court. Uh, the thing that's really impressive is that the prosecution went the extra mile in this to ensure that Barry could see his daughters. They interviewed him. They, they worked it out, and they made it possible. Now, can you imagine what that first meeting is going to be like when they sit down with their father in jail? <laughs> Holy cow, I would love to be a fly on that wall. So the court lays out a number of rules for filming, specifically that there's not to be any audio recording in the courtroom. Now, this is really important, and anyone found doing this could be held in contempt of court. Serious business. Now, in all, this is a real win for the public to be able to participate in these hearings in this manner. Well, let's talk a little bit about the arrest affidavit. If you've seen or heard anything about this, you know that the prosecution did not oppose the release of the arrest warrant to the public. The DA, Linda Stanley, wanted the public to get this. And by the way, if you didn't catch uh, my podcast interview with Linda Stanley last week, go to Profiling Evil Podcasts on whatever your favorite podcast platform is and check that thing out. It was a great discussion of her role as district attorney and her take on filing circumstantial criminal cases. Who would have known that we were so close to seeing the DA in action in the state versus Barry Morphew? Only two days after talking to us live, she uh, leads this major arrest. Really fun. Oh, and, and by the way, you don't want to miss that because we learned that the DA uh, really likes Starsky of Starsky and Hutch. Who, who didn't? Uh, in fact, when we voted uh, on Profiling Evil, Three to one, you folks liked Starsky over Hutch. Now, Hutch is a great guy. But go back and watch it, especially the part where I surprised the DA by having Paul Michael Glazer, the star of Starsky and Hutch, come on to the show, and we spent about an hour just laughing and talking police work and stuff. It was a lot of fun. But back to the affidavit. The defense asked the court for seven days to review the affidavit before it makes its final decision on whether to release it or not. The judge approves this request, a good thing, and so you and I are going to just have to keep our fingers crossed for another week that we're going to get a glimpse of the evidence and the elements of the crime in the state of Colorado versus Barry Morphew. Well, thanks for watching, and make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button for Profiling Evil. I'm going to be looking for your comments below about how you felt everything went yesterday and what you think is going to happen in the case. And by the way, here's a little bit of filming trivia. I'm up at my cabin in the mountains, and I wondered how many of you caught the moose walking by in the background while we were doing the show. I'll see you soon at the next crime scene.